Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hot Topics, where, as you can see on the screen behind me, today will be part four <laughs> of this hot topic of predestination. I had uh, planned <laughs> to only do part one, but uh, I have been receiving more and more questions on uh, this topic, and so we're just going to keep going and do as many parts as we need to until we can get a better understanding biblically of this topic of predestination. Now, uh, kind of like as a, <laughs> on a side note, I'm, I'm happy that I'm getting all these questions um, after my teachings. Um, so on one hand, I'm very happy that you're giving me more questions on this. On the other hand, I'm going, am I confusing them so much <laughs> that they <laughs> keep having to send me questions? And whatever it is, we're just going to keep going, okay? So, um, Predestination Part Four. Uh, again, um, every you know, born again <laughs> Bible reading believer uh, understands that the Bible clearly talks about this doctrine, the doctrine of predestination. You can't get around it. It's very clear in Scripture that God, in His grace, before the foundation of time predestined a people to be his own. You cannot get around that topic. God chooses a people for himself, a people to be saved, a people to be with him throughout eternity. Now, and we also know that God doesn't choose everybody, right? Because not everybody goes to heaven. And so, the question is not whether or not the doctrine of predestination is biblical. It's, it's clearly biblical. The question is, why does God predestine people? Or, um, on what basis? Now, as we've studied the, you know, during the first three parts, I'll just do a quick review. One group says that God, before the foundation of time, God who is all-knowing, looked down the corridor of time and knew which people would love Him, which people would choose Him, and based on that foreknowledge, God predestined those people. That is called conditional election. God predestined you, Christian, based on the condition that he knew that you would choose him. Conditional election. Well, another group says, no, God chose you based on no condition, thinking that you would love him and first choose him because you wouldn't, because you couldn't, because you were dead to God. And as a result, before the foundation of time, God, yeah, could have looked down the corridor of time and, and seen you, but he would have known you would have never chosen him. But in spite of that, and without any condition on our, your part, Christian, God chose you. That's called non-conditional election. And so the question is, What's the Bible say on this? And again, if you've been with us on the first three uh, you know, teachings on this, I, I've gone through various different scriptures in Romans and, and so forth. But what I want to do today is this. I think a lot of times people get confused and they say, well, you know, again, in Romans 10, it says that you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that, that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So people will say, well, wait a second. It sounds like, again, the people who believe in conditional election, they say, well, it obviously sounds like that you have to make the choice. Guess what? I agree with that. However, the question is this. How are you able to make that choice? And that's why I want to do a teaching here in John chapter 3, a very famous text that you're aware of, where Jesus was talking to a very, very high-profile religious leader there in Jerusalem. His name was Nicodemus. 
And Jesus made it clear to Nicodemus that in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. Now, the reason I'm going to teach this to you today is I want you to see how a person is able to confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. And I, and I think this will start to clarify some of the questions I've been receiving. Here we go. John chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Okay, by the way, just as a side note, Nike uh, was a Greek goddess, goddess of victory. Nike. Think of a, can you think of a, an international company actually that started in Oregon here in the United States years back that is very, very popular when it comes to making products such as Nike tennis shoes and Nike outfits? Nike, Nike, victory, right? The swoosh, okay. Well, our friend Nicodemus, right? <laughs> was a, a man of victory, right? Mr. Nike, but he was a lot more than that. He was a ruler of the Jews, so he was a Pharisee, but also he was part of the Sanhedrin, the religious ruling body there in Israel. Not only that, verse 10 tells us that he was the teacher of Israel. So our friend Nicodemus was the expert on God. So Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in verse 2 and said to him, Rabbi, respectful greeting, calling Jesus teacher. We know that you've come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs. Jesus, just a little bit earlier there in Jerusalem, had performed many miracles. Nicodemus obviously saw them or at the very least heard about them. And here he's complimenting Jesus. By the way, he came by night because he didn't want the other religious leaders who were really starting to hate Jesus because he had just earlier also, uh, prior to performing all the miracles in Jerusalem, he just cleansed the temple for the first time. So Nicodemus comes by night to Jesus. He says, wow, Rabbi, obviously you're, you're from God because you, no one could perform all these miracles unless God is with him. And look how Jesus responded. Verse 3, he didn't say thank you. He didn't say, oh, you're right, Nicodemus. He just, he completely nailed Nicodemus. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot sing the kingdom of God. In other words, what he's saying to Nicodemus is this. You are the religious leader in Israel. You're part of the you know, elite religious group, the Sanhedrin in Israel. He says, Jesus was saying to him, you have no clue how to get to heaven. All your religious rituals, all your teachings on good works in order to be saved. Jesus says, no, 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 no. You want to compliment me that I'm somebody from God? He goes, How? Jesus says, let me just tell you something right now. Truly, truly, I say to you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Well, can you imagine how this shocks Nicodemus? I mean, he is the rabbi of rabbis in Israel, right? He's the expert on Judaism. And Jesus says, Unless you're born again, you're not going to heaven. Nicodemus says, verse 4, How can a man be born when he's old? Which gives us an indication that Nicodemus was elderly, obviously very wise, very learned. Nicodemus goes, he cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus says again to him, verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, and of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is not talking about Christian baptism here. That hasn't yet occurred. That would occur after Jesus' death and resurrection. We're right at the very beginning of his earthly ministry here. So he's not talking about being born of water, meaning Christian baptism and the Spirit. Nor is he talking about, uh, you know, uh, you know, giving a, an analogy of how, you know, when a, when a woman gives birth, her water breaks. I mean, nowhere in Scripture does it talk about that. Remember, Nicodemus would have been an expert in the Old Testament, right? Well, nowhere in the Old Testament that we get does it talk about that stuff. So Nicodemus wouldn't have had a clue had Jesus been referring to a woman's water breaking, right? No. What, would, what was Jesus saying? 
something that Nicodemus was very clear about. Passages in the Old Testament like Ezekiel 36, passages in Isaiah, where God said that he would regenerate, make alive his chosen people, and God used the analogy of water and spirit to talk about the internal Holy Spirit cleansing when the Holy Spirit makes somebody alive, when they are born again. The Holy Spirit cleanses a person from the inside out where they are a new creation. They are given a new heart, a new will, a new desire. They're alive born again in the spiritual realm. So Jesus nails Nicodemus. Nicodemus, wait a second, how can a person be born again? He can't be born through his mother. Boom, a second time, right? Jesus says, no, 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 Nicodemus, you need to know this. You do know this. That unless a man is born of water and spirit, Jesus is referring back to Old Testament prophecy, to Old Testament teachings. Unless a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of of God. And again, how do we know that, that Jesus was nailing Nicodemus on this? Again, in verse 10, Jesus said, you're the teacher in Israel and you don't understand these things. Again, he wasn't talking about Christian baptism. Nicodemus would have had no clue about that at this point. So Jesus wouldn't have said, well, how can you understand these things? And again, Jesus wasn't talking about being born of water, meaning like, you know, a woman's water. But no! He wouldn't have had a clue about that. But Nicodemus would have known about passages in Isaiah, passages in Ezekiel where God had said, I will give you a new heart. I will remove your heart of stone. I will cleanse you with water and spirit. Nicodemus would have known those passages and Jesus nails him and says, and you're the teacher in Israel and you don't understand these things of how a person can be born again to enter the kingdom of God? And again, that's why Jesus, after saying twice to him, you must be born again, you must be born again, verse 6, Jesus explains it. That which is born of flesh is flesh, right? A human, a sinner, can only give birth to another human, a sinner, right? That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Born again, genao anathon is the Greek phrase, meaning born from above or born from God. It's like a new generation, a new, uh, uh, that's why it's called regeneration. We come into this world physically alive, but spiritually dead to God. Ephesians 2 tells us that, right? And we are separated from God. We're under the just judgment of God because we have a sin nature and we continue to sin against our holy God. And because we're dead to God, we cannot choose God. We will never choose God because we don't have the power on our own to do so. Why? Because we're dead to God. Our mothers, sinners, <laughs> though they were wonderful ladies, right? Our mothers gave birth to us. Sinners. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> right? And so we were born in the physical realm, but we were dead to God in the spiritual realm. That's why Jesus says to Nicodemus, that which is flesh, can give birth to flesh. But in order to be born again, born from above, born of God, genau anathon, Jesus says that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Jesus said to him, don't be amazed. I say to you, you must be born again. This is the third time. And here's the analogy. He says in verse 8, you know how the wind blows where it wishes? Yeah. You hear the sound of it? Yeah. But you don't know where it comes from and where it's going? In other words, what Jesus is saying is this. You know the physical wind? You, 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 you have no way to control it. You hear it. But you didn't bring it. 
You can't control it. You don't know when it's coming and going. You just hear the sound, right? What Jesus is saying is, in the same way, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. You can't control when you're regenerated. Wait a second, Andrew. I'm not sure I get this. Okay, let's do this. Physical analogy. Um, I'm down in South Florida. We have a lot of hurricanes. Now, I can't control when the hurricane is coming. I certainly can't control when the hurricane leaves. How do I know that the wind blew? Well, I heard it sound when I'm locked up in my house. But it's the next day when I come out of the house that I see the evidence that the wind really blew. Trees are down, branches everywhere, shingles on the roofs are gone, right? Or, I also know if I come out of my house, I heard the wind blowing all night, I come out of the house and I don't see trees down, I don't see branches everywhere, I don't see cars upside down, I don't see shingle from the roofs all over the place. I say to myself, what? The hurricane missed us. So how do I know whether or not the wind blew? Once I look and see the evidence. Jesus said, so is everyone. It's the same thing who is born of the Spirit. In other words, you cannot control when you're regenerated, made alive in the spiritual realm. You don't choose to be regenerated. You can't control the Holy Spirit. Try to. But better yet, try to control the wind. You can't control the wind? You can't control the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. Well then, Andrew, how do I know when I'm regenerated? Well, just like you know that the wind blew physically, when you see the evidence of it in like manner, you will know that you have been regenerated, born of the Spirit. How? When the, quote, Spirit, unquote, blows, you will see evidence that you've been regenerated. Suddenly you have a desire to worship God. Where'd that come from? The wind of the Spirit blew. You've been regenerated. Suddenly you have a desire to read the Word of God. Where'd that come from? The Holy Spirit. Suddenly you have a desire to um, obey God, live for God, share with others the truths of God. You're even willing to be persecuted for the name of God. Where in the world did that come from? Oh, you chose all this? No, you couldn't. You wouldn't because you were dead to God, right? I mean, if anybody could have chosen right? Would have been Nicodemus. This guy was the teacher in Israel. He knew the Old Testament scriptures. The Messiah was standing right in front of him. Didn't choose. Couldn't choose because he was dead. And that's why Jesus said to him, all your great religious stuff, Nicodemus, is nothing. Won't get you to heaven. You're choosing to be religious. You're choosing to be moral. But unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, how am I born again? You must be born of water and spirit. It's an internal Holy Spirit regeneration where God says, I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. In fact, let's just go real quick to Ezekiel 36. We'll come right back. Ezekiel 36. I mean, it's right there. Uh, starting in verse uh, 25, God said, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. Moreover, verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a new heart heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will then be careful to 
observe them. Do you see what the Lord is saying there in Ezekiel? You see how many I wills God said? I will, I will, I will. Not you will. Not you can. Not you should. Not I'm hoping you will. I'm thinking you will. No. God said, I will. Back to John 3. Again, that's pretty clear. That's why Jesus rips Nicodemus and says to him, you're the teacher of Israel? You don't know these things? Okay, then how's a person made alive? The wind of the Holy Spirit must blow. Again, Jesus used a physical analogy. He said, Nicodemus, you've been trying to control, you know, the work of God in your life by following all of your religious traditions, doing what you think you can do to get to heaven. Jesus, no. Unless you're born again, you're not going to heaven. You must be born of water and spirit. Referring back to Ezekiel 36, what we just read. That's where God does it. And then Jesus gave him that physical analogy. You know, Nicodemus, just like you can't control the wind, you hear it coming and going. But, but you're not sure what, where it went and how it all happened until later you look and see the evidence that the wind blew. He said, so is everyone who was born of the Spirit. You don't choose to be regenerated, to be born again. The Holy Spirit, because you can't control the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit regenerates you, makes you alive. You once were blind, now you see. You once were dead, now you're alive. You once were lost, now you're found. And the Holy Spirit gives you the gift of faith so that now that you're alive, all of God those he chose or predestined before the foundation of time are those for whom Christ died for 2,000 years ago on the cross. And those are the ones that the Holy Spirit will regenerate, make alive. How do I know when I was regenerated? Well, you don't know the exact moment, but you will see the evidence that the wind of the Spirit blew in your life, right? Again, suddenly, you want to worship God? Huh. Before you were hostile to God. Suddenly you want to read the Word of God? Before it used to be Greek to you. Now you're actually looking for Greek commentaries to understand the Word of God. <laughs> suddenly you want to submit to God? Where before you were your own authority? Suddenly you want to share truth about God? Where before you laughed at people who did that? Suddenly you're willing to be one of those that people laugh at and persecute for the name of God? How'd that happen? The wind of the Spirit blew. You were regenerated. You have a new heart, a new will, a new mind. You're a new creation in Christ. And every born-again believer will see the evidence of this new life given by the Holy Spirit. No evidence? The wind of the Spirit didn't blow. So, let's look at the order here. Those who say that God predestines based on the condition that He knows people will first turn and choose Him and love Him, they say that you have to work up the faith in order to make yourself alive. They say that faith, confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, they say that that faith precedes your regeneration. Well, how's that happen? It's impossible, right? Where does that faith come from in order to make yourself alive? In other words, you make yourself alive? 
by confessing that Jesus is Lord and believing you're no, you can't confess that Jesus is Lord. You won't confess that Jesus is Lord. You will not believe in your heart that God raised him because you're dead to God. So faith does not precede regeneration. It's the opposite. First, the Holy Spirit regenerates you. You have nothing to do with that. Unless, of course, you think you can control the Holy Spirit like you control the wind. You can't do either, can you? Right? First, the Holy Spirit regenerates you. The Holy Spirit gives you a new heart, a new mind, a new will. The Holy Spirit gives you the gift of faith so that now you can confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Do you see it? And again, it makes clear sense. I think, again, in, in our modern Christianese, we, we just get confused with, with the order. We say, well, I have to confess with my mouth. Well, yeah, but how can you do so if you're dead? Well, that makes sense. I mean, you have to first be made alive. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, who does that? God does. So, does God predestine you? based on the condition that he knows, he knew before the foundation of time, that you would first choose him? What's the answer? No. Unless, of course, you think you can control the Holy Spirit. No, God predestines us based on no condition that he thinks we would choose him. He knows we can't, therefore we won't. God predestines you. Christ redeems you. The Holy Spirit regenerates you. And once you're alive and have the gift of faith to recognize two things, you're a wretched sinner, number two, in desperate need of a Savior, and that Jesus is the one and only Savior. Again, the Holy Spirit gave you that gift of faith. He gave you the new heart, the new mind, the new will. Now you go, but of course. Huh, that which I used to laugh at, that which I used to deny, now I'm beating my chest and saying, Lord, please have mercy on me, the sinner. How did you get to that point? It had nothing to do with you. It is all of God's grace. You are predestined, not based on any condition that God thought you would do something first. You are predestined based upon God's amazing grace. You are predestined because God chose you. Christ redeemed you. The Holy Spirit regenerated you. And that's why God and God alone gets all the glory. Amen.